This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positive Vermont. And uh, today we are going to be exploring a very exciting uh, group, the Milton Artist Guild, and what they have in store uh, right now during the holiday and post-holiday period, and uh, how uh, you people uh, uh, in the area and around the country uh, can uh, get uh, involved with the Milton Artist Guild. And my guest is uh, Lisa Rees, the president of the Milton Artists Guild. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you spending time with me today. Tell us a little bit about yourself, first of all. Well, I am, as you said, the president of the Milton Artists Guild. Um, but I also have um, a full-time job. I am a leadership coach. I have my own business. Um, and I am very active as a volunteer in our community. I serve on a couple of other boards and do a lot of customer uh, facing um, things with, with all our customers in the gallery, as well as the community. I'm constantly attending meetings um, and just, you know, getting the pulse on the community. What is it that um, is on their minds? Um, what is it that they're looking for? Um, and especially, you know, being an art gallery, um, a lot of people still don't know about us. So my mission right now is to spread the word. And that's why we were thrilled when we got this invitation to come on your program and to talk about who we are and what we do. Well, tell us a little bit about the Milton Artist Guild and how it got started, its history, and uh, yeah. who was involved. Yeah, so I, I live in Milton um, and um, I you know, love to, to craft shows. And uh, I noticed that there was something called the Milton Artist Guild. And I really didn't know what it was, in all honesty. I thought it was something for um, artists to go and, you know, advance level people. And I didn't realize what it was, was a bunch of artists who display their work, sell their work and support each other in this wonderful community. So how it started was back in 1988, there were three women who um, were artists in this area and they loved so much what they did and they had passion for their art that they wanted to share it and talk about it. And so they formed this kind of um, living room collaborative where they you know, got together, shared what they were working on, their projects. Um, this was back in 1988. Um, and they, all of a sudden, it started to just grow and grow where more people were hearing about it and wanting to join. And finally, it got to be so large that they needed space. They said, we're ready to take that next step. And you know that space is at a premium, um, especially five years ago. Um, this was obviously pre-pandemic. And in Milton, you know, there's not a lot of, uh, of retail space. So we were very lucky, fortunate that Ernie Parmelo of Parmelo Real Estate, um, when the Hannafords moved to its new location, they had a lot of space. And we said we would love to open up a nonprofit um, and to display all these artists, all their work, um, and to sell it in the gallery. And so for the last five years, we have been so blessed with having their support. Ernie Parmelo has been our biggest champion, and he has allowed us to be in the space for free. And that is a game changer because as a nonprofit, we knew we couldn't possibly afford the space. So it started as, you know, just three women coming together. And all of a sudden, it just grew into a storefront. And now we have been there for, uh, we celebrated our fifth anniversary over this summer. And as I said, um, you know, right now we have about 160 artists and they are displaying their work in uh, the Milton Square. That's what it's called, Milton Square, right behind the post office in Milton. Well, I remember that uh, uh, situation getting it several years ago, and that was uh... I think we did a program shortly after you came there, but this show goes not only statewide, it gets around the world, it gets on the web, um, it gets on to the country. So tell us a little bit about Milton, where it is, uh, any geographical yeah. or helpful information you can give to someone 
who wants to come into uh, Chittenden County and, and go see it. Yeah, so a lot of people um, ask, you know, where is Milton? Um, we are about 20 minutes north of Burlington and about an hour south of Montreal. So we are just um, on the northern part of Chittenden County. A lot of people think we are part of Franklin County, but we're actually in Chittenden County, which is the most populous county in Vermont. Um, and so we're really easy to, to get to. We're not far at all, but a lot of people still even in Vermont um, and even in our community are like, where, where are you? So we have really made it our mission to advertise. Um, you know, we took this huge initiative, something that you know nonprofits don't have a lot of money, but we thought it was important to be part of the Vermont Attractions Association this year. So what we did is we had all those rack cards printed up. And so when you go to big tourist attractions like Echo and Ben and Jerry's um, and the Teddy Bear Factory, you'll actually see the Milton Artists Guild, our cards on the rack. And what that's doing is it's helping people, um, you know, understand that we're so close to everywhere. And you know, Vermont, we're not a big state. And uh, it's been very gratifying to see people from throughout the state and the region. We had a lot of tourists this summer. And we had a lot of people who made special trips to our gallery to see all the different artwork. So that was really gratifying. I've seen those cars. They even have them in the Burlington Police Station and, and other parts of uh, downtown Burlington. Uh, it's really something else. Tell us about the, the physical makeup. Of the physical space? Yeah. Sure. Um, so um, when people look at the shopping plaza, um, they are really surprised by how large our facility is, our store is. We have 6,200 square feet of um, footage in our gallery. We have about 150 different artists of all different mediums from painting to sculpture to metal art to wood turning, photography, um, play, we have potters. I mean, it's just amazing. And so people can kind of get an idea of what we offer by going to our website, which is um, our miltonartistguild.org, O-R-G. And they can see how big we are. We also have in the back um, a workshop space because we love to give workshops. So our artists will give workshops on introduction to acrylic painting or how to make a beaded snowflake. Um, I made a, um, a beaded um, bracelet the other day. And every month we're doing paint and sips, which is super popular, where you come in and bring your own beverage of choice and you get to paint with, a, with one of our artists, a painting to bring home. And we've had a lot of people who have given them as gifts, who have kept them, um, you know, kept them for themselves and just love just coming together and having a good time. So our gallery is very deceptive from the storefront because when you look at it, you see a double window side of it. It is spectacular, yeah. Is there any kind of process by which uh, items get displayed in the gallery, or is it uh, like a, a jury yes. system? Uh, tell us how that works. Yeah, so so when I um, talk about you know our mission and who we are, um, we take a lot of pride in that everybody is welcomed into the gallery. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a juried artist. And what juried mean is basically it goes through a panel of to see if your art is um, is at a, a caliber to be displayed in soul. Um, what, and while we do have juried artists in our gallery, which is exciting, we have a lot of juried artists, but what we pride ourselves is that we are also for the beginning artists the artist who has never sold their wares or is unsure whether or not they're, they're good enough to display. And so what we do is because we have 150 artists, we really can help mentor younger artists. We can give them advice and pointers. What should you sell your product out uh, um, by? You know, how much should you, uh, you know, what's your markup? Um, knowing that we take a small percentage um, of, of commission, but we pride ourselves that we only take 
30% of commission where the artist gets 70% if you volunteer um, in our gallery. So that is what's exciting about it is that we are the largest nonprofit, non-juried art gallery in Vermont. Wow. Um, and so, well, you know, we love, um, you know, all the art galleries. We just take pride that we're so large and that we really have a community. And that to me is the most important part of who we are, is a sense of community and belonging. That's but one of the things uh, we, we spoke about was what the Milton Art Guild does for the community. Tell us about some of those uh, projects or, or other activities that you're involved in. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you come into Milton, you're going to see our work immediately, because as you come into Milton, you'll see Gardner's Supply, which is a huge national firm, and they have a huge warehouse on Route 7, and if you go um, towards it, you'll notice on the side is this beautiful mural with a hummingbird and flowers, huge, giant, giant, and Milton Artist Guild was part of painting that for them. Um, and, and as you start to go into Milton, the welcome sign of Milton was designed by our artists. Ew. As you continue through our town, you'll notice that if you go to our um, public spaces, like our um, ballparks, you'll see all the dugouts and all the um, different, um, you know, uh, buildings in the park. And those were all painted with our artists and kids. So the kids from the schools got to participate. We did outlines for them and they actually painted it um, in the schools themselves. We um, help you know, with murals on the walls and we will come in and do guest speaking. The Milton High School just launched a Milton Innovation Center at the high school. And what they're doing is they are opening this up to maker space for the students and the community. So last year was a pilot, the, earlier this year, where we met the Milton Artist Guild, partnered with the school, and we um, told them, well, what would you need if you had a pottery studio or a wood turning studio or metal smithing? And so we lent um, our volunteers, you know, our members came in and taught classes. They taught advanced techniques in metal smithing and in pottery. Um, we also had a wood turner who's helping them convert some of their space into, it's called dirty space, you know, where you have, um, you know, shavings and things like that. So we see the potential of partnering with the schools and kids to say, you know, you don't have to always go the traditional route of going to college. Maybe you want to become an artist. So that's really important. Um, the other thing we do around kids, which I think is critical, is that we have every Sunday a free kids workshop. So from one o'clock to three o'clock every Sunday, we received a grant um, from the Vermont Federal Credit Union, and they've been so gracious to give us money so that we can pay for supplies and our artists to teach a 15 minute to 30 minute craft um, to kids ranging anywhere from three years old up to teenagers, they come in, they can make a project. It takes, like I said, about 15, 30 minutes, and they get their hands dirty. They get to talk to artists. They get to be in, in creative space, and they get to socialize with each other. So we've been offering this for a couple years now, and it's a wonderful give back to the community where we have families who come in all every week. We have you know new people that come in. Um, so that's exciting. And the other thing that's exciting is that we applied with the town. They received some um, ARPA money and we applied for a grant that would be for art programs every week for homeschooled and alternative school children. Wow. So we would then open it up once a week, like let's say Thursday, we'd have two different age groups and you would come in and you could be from any homeschool or alternative school at a certain point and it would be for a minimal cost because the grant only applies to 80%. And so what we would do is charge a minimal cost to be part of a weekly art program. So we're hoping that we can get the word out. We should receive word any, probably by the end of the month. 
and we will be advertising that on our website and through social media. But that to me is about giving back to the community. Our artists are so giving and it's about cultivating art and bringing out creativity and socialization in our youth. It's a really important mission of ours. And okay. we're pretty proud of it. And where did that grant come from? Uh what was the source of that? So it was the um, the the uh, pandemic money, the American Relief Act, oh. and so Milton received, I believe, three million dollars, and they've already, you know, they already have their projects of many millions, but they wanted to give the ta the the community and nonprofits an opportunity to maybe fund um, additional projects. So uh, back in November, um, I did a presentation to the select board and, you know, asked for the funding for all of next year and the following year and to do it as a pilot and see, like, maybe eventually we'll have businesses who will want to sponsor us, just like the Vermont Federal Credit Union sponsored us for Social Sundays. Maybe we'll have businesses who will say, yeah, I believe in this and I want to fund this. But for now, we're hoping that we get the funding from the town of Milton. That's great. That, that's really a great interaction there. You know, a, a lot of groups have their own projects, but they don't have the know-how of being able to apply for things, the, the grants that come from governments or, or from industry or even from um, material makers and manufacturers. And that sounds like a pretty interesting part of networking that you're doing there. Yeah, it's it's definitely, you know, one of the things about being a nonprofit is that you absolutely have to rely on grants and fundraising, but there is a difference between a grant and fundraising. Mm -hmm. When you are getting a grant, they give you money to do a project. So it doesn't help your operational costs. And so if we're to fund our executive director or we're to fund the power, the lights, the gas, the utilities, we need actual, you know, to do fundraising. And we count on generous individuals, our artists give back to us. And really what we're hoping this year is that Milton businesses and businesses in general will see that, you know, we're very, we don't have a parent organization. We don't have another place we can apply. We can't apply to the state of Vermont or federal grants. And so we really do rely on the generosity. Um, and that's why we we need to raise about $100,000 every year just to keep our lights on. Um, and that, that's that's a lot. <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about your, your fundraising activities and, and why people uh, should support uh, you and how they can do it. Uh, uh, just give us an idea about that entire money, uh, art and money, and, and what you need right now from the public. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate the, the opportunity to make an appeal because um, it hasn't been easy. Um, these last um, three years with the pandemic has really um, you know, crippled us, unfortunately, with our ability to get out there in the community. You know, not a lot of people want to be face to face. So now we're starting to see where people are more comfortable. But we, um, our executive director that we had um, left back in um, early July. And so without an executive director, it has been kind of, you know, the board and myself to step in and it's really hard to be strategic when you're trying to figure out how do you do payroll and how do you do QuickBooks and how do you do, and, and oh, there's some grants that I need to. So for me, our biggest priority right now is to hire an executive director. And I'm super excited because one of our artists, um, who's our vice president, Karina Thurston, um, she is ready to take on this position. She knows the challenges. She's an artist. She's a leader um, in, and she's, you know, has a lot of energy and ideas. And so what we're trying to do right now is we did our fall letter of appeal where we mail, you know, letters, but on our website, we have a link and we have some opportunities for people to make a donation and they get put into a, a raffle. Um, and also one of our artists and the founder, one of the founders of the Milton Artists Guild, Lorraine Manley, she's probably one of our most popular. She's a Miltonian. 
Um, her and her husband have lived here for many decades and her art is just spectacular. It's been featured in books and magazines and she's been at the, you know, the hospitals and she's on display in the public. And she donated a beautiful 24 by 48 inch um, painting called Woodlands. And it's spectacular. It retails for $3,200. Right now, I think the bidding's up to $500. It's a silent auction. And it um, it ends on uh, midnight on December 22nd. So somebody can come into the store and get it and have it for the holidays. So, um, so we're very blessed to have that. So our goal is to raise $15,000. Um, we also have a grant, a pending operational grant out there with the Vermont Arts Council. They were also given some pandemic money to help the creative economy. So we are part of the creative economy. A lot of people don't realize, you know, that Vermont has this engine, 8% of our economy is the creative economy, which is the arts and theater and things like that. And so that is a big, um, you know, that's why we're constantly looking at ways to say, you know, we want to serve you, but we also need you to help us to serve you. Um, so we do two big fundraising events a year. In addition to our letters of appeal, we have something called the big deal, which we do in the summer. And what that is, is all our organizations across Vermont, we partner with them. And it's a cash raffle. Basically the top prize is is cash. And what we do is for every ticket that's sold, we share the proceeds with our partners. So we partnered with the artists in residence, the Vermont Dance um, Theater, um, you know, the Swanton um, Arts Council. So we are partnering with any art organization across uh, Vermont to help them raise money too. So we feel really good about being the sponsor. We find the we find the prize money, we print, we do all the work and we are able to give back to those art organizations. The other thing we do is in September, uh, the weekend after Labor Day, we do something called Art and Stroll. Um, we had our second annual Art and Stroll event and it's in the field between the Hannaford Shopping Center and where we're located. There's a huge field there. And we had uh, 50 artists from all over the um, state and it was a craft fair. Um, and we are trying to expand that to have more food vendors and crafters. And But again, it's a way that we can bring art into the community and also support local artists. So those are our big pushes. But really where we get our money is from the generosity of individual donors and business donors. That's where it's all in, really. That's great. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, your plans for the future. You mentioned the Art Walk, but give us an idea where, again, this is the, the last show of uh, the year uh, for Positively yeah. Vermont. We're going into the holidays, heavily into the holidays, and then the new year. Yeah. Tell us what's next on your agenda for the future. Well, right now we are, as you said, the holidays have been amazing. This is where we do probably a third of our sales is in December. So I just was at the gallery this morning and walking through and all the artists are so excited. They're just ramping up and getting all their product out there. And so we really welcome everybody to come and see us. We also have an online store, which we are expanding. So people who are not in this area who want to purchase anything on our website, that is going to be our goal for next year is to expand our um, our online website. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to offer more workshops. We really want to query people about what is it that you're interested in? What do you want to learn? You know, do you want to learn how to paint? Do you want to learn, you know, theory? Do you want to learn how to make things? So we all want to continue to offer our workshops and our paint and sips, which are a lot of fun. So we're going to really try to do a lot of marketing and advertising and also ways to involve the community. We'd love to host events. So we're going to look at rental, renting out our space so that you can have a, a get together, a meeting, a party, and host it in a beautiful space like the Milton Artist Guild. So that's going to be huge. And also to support our members. 
we want to do more around that, making sure that they feel supported. So Karina has so much um, I, so many ideas of how do we bring in marginalized communities, unrepresented communities, um, really making the Milton Artist Guild feel like a place where everybody belongs. And I think that that is going to be our focus. It's, it's not about, you know, making a lot of money for ourselves. It's about how do we, we help our artists support them to make the money. These are 150 entrepreneurial artists who are just, their work just blows me away. So we're going to hopefully have the kids programs for the alternate school and the homeschooled kids and just, you know, stabilizing ourselves and, and making sure that, that we are here for many years to come. So it's about building relationships with our donors and we want people to feel like they're part of our guild. And, and that to me is our, you know, biggest priority is that everybody's welcome, everybody belongs, we're all in this together, and we really do need the support of the public to make it happen. Well, that's great. That's a nice uh, wrap up for us today. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you again and uh, meeting Karina uh, during the course of 2023. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you very much, Lisa. And uh, this is Dennis McMahon for Positively Vermont. My guest has been Lisa Rees, the president of the Milton Artists Guild, located in beautiful Milton, Vermont. Thank you all <laughs> for watching.